All right, welcome back to another Silhouette Studio tutorial. Like normal, I'm Richard. And this video today uh, comes from a couple of people reaching out to me in response to a font like this. They wanted a, a Jersey or Varsity style font. And the post was started that they were looking for a specific font. And they posted something like this and said, what font is this? Um, and people were kind of surprised when I said that you could make any font that you want have this effect. And so this video is going to show how we do that. This one should be substantially shorter than our normal videos because this is going to be a quick technique or trick, more so than an involved series of tutorials. Uh, so with that, let's jump in. And first things first, we need ourselves a number. Let's pick just a couple random numbers here. Let's go seven, three, four. Well, some different shapes. Maybe a nine. Now we've got nine and three curve in the same direction. Let's make it a six. Like if it was the other direction. All right, just some random numbers. And what we have here, we'll kind of look at our reference. If we were to try to kind of copy this effect, we've got our primary number here. We've got an empty space down to the right, and then a kind of drop shadow off here on the end. So what we need is three copies of this text. One for the main number, one for the empty space that will be subtracted, and once for this shadow. So the easiest way I know to do this is to create a copy in the exact same position that the text is now. That way we can move it like down one and over one and be consistent. So what I like to do is make a copy, which we do with control and a direction. And then I'll put it directly, in this case I put control right, so it moved it directly to the right. And then control left to copy back. And so now we have two perfectly stacked on top of one another. So now if I hold shift to move down and move over, because again this is down and to the right, I went down one and over one. You could change up if you don't want this exact look. You could go, for example, down two and over one, depending on the angle that you want this drop shadow effect. And then we want the same thing. We want one in the exact same position that we can move down and right one more time to create this black section here, this little offset shadow. So we're going to control right, control left. Now we've got those two stacked. So now I'm going to move down with shift down and shift right. And we'll delete the extra just so the clutter and distraction is out of the way. And this can be kind of disorienting to look at, so I like to give it some color just so it's real easy to see what's going on, what's on top, and where, you know, kind of the overall layout of our font. But the colors don't matter, just different so you can see. And again, if we're creating what is in this image, I guess I should have picked a different font. It kind of defeats the purpose if we don't make it more interesting, huh? Arial's kind of bland and boring. Oh, that one does not support numbers. Something with a little... You can do it with any font, but they tend to look better if they've got a little more bulk. No, oh, actually right there is kind of what we're creating. Uh, Algerian, if you want this font, uh, which realistically would have come from Defont, uh, the website. So if you like this one, it's, it's already kind of what we're going for. But if you don't, again, we can make whatever we want. That one does not support numbers, which is unfortunate. I like that font. Let's go that one. That's kind of interesting and weird. I like it. But same thing. I'm going to go kind of quick now because we just did it. Down, shift, copy, down, shift. Give my color real quick. That way we're not wasting a lot of time in the video to catch back up to where we were. There we go. All right, we're caught up. So in this case, we're moving down into the right. So the red is actually going to be our final, like, full letter, or in this case, number, I guess. So this red is going to be the end result, and the blue being the furthest out is going to be this little shadow piece. So we want to move the black in front of the blue. If you've watched any of my previous videos, we've talked about this at least a few times. Uh, I usually call it a cookie cutter, just because that's easy for people to understand. Is that your cookie cutter needs to be on top of the cookie dough in order to cut the cookie dough. So the black is going to cut the blue. If we go the other way, if this is on top of the black, and we try to cut, it's going to leave this little sliver of black on the top, and we're going to lose all the blue. So make sure that your order is correct, or you will not get your desired outcome. So black on top of the blue, select both of those. Again, the color doesn't matter. Just for this, it's black and blue. And we go to the Modify tab here, 
and to subtract. And so you can see now we have our full number, which is red in ours. We can make it black like theirs if we wanted to. And the shadow piece, which is now separate. So I'm going to select all and then shift click my black to deselect it. That way all the, sh the shadow parts are all selected. And you can see now what we have is the main number, the seven, the three, the four, and the six. And then kicked off to the right and below, we have these pieces here. Our angle is a little more exaggerated, this gap, than there. So we can select the font and move it to whatever desired stagger that you want. Trying to kind of get this same amount of spacing. That's pretty close. If you go all the way up to it, it'll create a drop shadow like you'll probably see a lot in like graffiti work. So we make this different colors. You can see it. And we take this all the way up to the black. It gives kind of that, that cast shadow, like I said, like in a lot of like graffiti work and that style of art, um, where you have this shadow to the wall. And then again, the more that you kick it off of that, the more you get kind of this effect, or you can go off of it a lot. And it gives you a very unique look, which may or may not be desirable to your project. And you can do this in any direction. At this one, we went down and to the right, but you could do exactly the same thing going up and left, for example, and do the exact same. We want this to cut this and give this a color so it's easy to see. I went the exact same direction, didn't it? <laughs> Undo. We'll cut this one. And I want the middle one. Did I select the middle one? Let's change the color and see. Yes, that one on top. This one to cut this one. That's why changing the color is helpful. And then if we select our font and change it, and you can see the blue is on top of the red, which is very unappealing. So bring your red to the top. And now we're going the other way. So now your primary font is here. And now our little offset piece that was bottom right is now top left. And you can literally go any direction. If you wanted to go straight left or straight up, that's an option as well. You do the exact same thing. Just don't add the second direction. So you could do something like that. I can't tell what's going on. Red's the hardest to see because the little outline is red. So I literally can't see anything. And then same thing. Either the black can have the blue shadow below it or the blue can have the black shadow above it. Realistically, above it is pretty unlikely. It means your light source is below, which unless it's like reflecting in a puddle is not likely. So realistically, the blue would be your shadow, but that's the joy of art. If you want to go the other way, you can. It just might not look correct to the eye because it's so rare we would see that in nature. But if you want to go that way, we can. I'm going to do the more realistic option and make the black the shadow, bring the blue to the top. And that is a really exaggerated distance. So let's go up like so. And then you have the blue in front and the shadow directly behind. So you don't have to kick it off to the side and you can still get that same effect where it's more like behind the number versus like off to the side. So that is how I create this effect. And it does work with text as well. I think it looks nicer with numbers than it does with letters. I'm going to do kind of a cast shadow effect like that. Um, but you can do it with font just the same. Let's do font. And capital letters or lowercase letters, they work the same. Um, generally, these the uppercase or capital letters tend to look a little cleaner, arguably. But it does work on both, just preference. That is way too busy. I like that, but our character spacing needs some adjusting. That's pretty evenly spaced. And you would do the exact same thing in exactly the same way. Copy it over, copy it back. Let's go uh, down and left this time. Over and back, down and left. Give it a color. This would be our last one, I think. This, you'll get the idea for sure. Just wanted to show you that it is an option with font if it was desired. It is generally more of a number type of technique. And you could leave it like this. This is kind of interesting with the blue, the black, the blue, the black, and the red. My mouse moved the wrong direction. Kind of gives a weird shadow effect. But if we were going to do the same thing again, 
the blue being the shadow, the red being in front, or the blue being in front, the red being the shadow. Which way did we go before? We have not done the shadow on the bottom left. So let's do the red as the shadow. So the black is our cookie cutter. Uh, up here, I forgot where I was going. Move it to the top. Cut the blue. So we need to select the black and the blue. And modify and subtract. Just like so. And we'll give the blue kind of more of a shadow color. Shadows aren't normally blue. Just like that. And again, you could lessen that space if you didn't like it. You could increase the space if you wanted it a lot more exaggerated. Something like that. Actually kind of like that. Or you can bring it all the way in and get that tight drop or cast shadow. So that is how I go about creating this effect. Hopefully that was helpful. If there's any confusion or something maybe I did out of habit that I didn't explain, uh, please let me know in the comments if there's something else I can help with on this technique. Uh, or if there's any other projects or techniques that you want help with, definitely let me know. Uh, this technique came from a question. So if a question was needing answered, we could make another video just the same way. And you could move this over to a jersey and give that that full effect a little hard oops a little hard to see on here deselect my white there we go and give it kind of a oop, i forgot to deselect the photo <laughs> and a shadowy color turn off those stupid cut lines because they're so distracting on a project Yeah, something like that. We've got the effect we're going for. So thanks for watching the video. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, thanks for the likes and the subscribes. We'll catch you in the next one and happy crafting.